Hey guys, Razorblade Mango here, and today I am joined by the the one, the only Claylex. Oh well, who is back after? When was the last time we recorded? I think it was was it the Halo thing was the last time. I think, I think so, yeah, I and think I think Halo. my bro was in there that one yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Made some really good inputs on that one. Yeah. yeah. So it's been it's been a fat minute since we've recorded, but we figured it would be a special occasion with the recent Xbox and Bethesda game showcase that was on Sunday. And um yeah, so I don't know if you wanted to dive I, I was I was thinking like we'll like very, very briefly talk about that the Keeley thing first. And I'd st- oh, I, I- <laughs> I only have I only have like oh, one man. I have one word for that. You mean summer? I, me, I would say summer, summer fest? shit fest. Summer shit fest. <laughs> summer shit. Summer shit fest. Yeah, shit fest. Shit fest. Is he like <laughs> spewing shit out of his ass while he's doing? <laughs> while he's doing the like, hey guys, oh. <laughs> going at it. Every time I'm there's like a going. world premiere, he just opens his ass on camera and just. <laughs> It just yeah, goes so. off, you know. Goes off. <laughs> He's having yeah. that Wendy's chili himself. You gotta get that Wendy's chili. Gotta get the Wendy's chili. <laughs> Spews it all out. You know what? I can't take this shit no more, man. One of the one of the world premieres is Wings comes on and just <laughs> farts in his farts out a fucking Wendy's chili. No, it's like and then it's a reveal. It's me that I'm the new Wings. Welcome to Wings too. And then I shave oh, my no. head while this whole makeup crew puts a beard over my face. And I cry in the camera like him, like, oh, oh I'm sorry. <laughs> Do it. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. We're getting out of hands, folks. But anyways, <laughs> I, just, I have, yeah. I have one, I have one thing to say about summer, summer game fest. <sighs> and that's my review of summer games fest. I'm so yeah, glad I didn't was, live stream that. It was, um, it's fucking I know boring. people are gonna get, I know people are gonna get mad at us over. Jesus Christ! I said it on Twitter, and then Razor had a laugh about like two grumpy old men saying that uh, <laughs> that we liked. It's like, yeah, this Sony's pretty good, and then like everyone's like, no yeah, man, great. you're gonna like, you're gonna like Xbox, and then the Summer Games Fest. These were good. No, no I don't. <laughs> I don't have to like I'm shit. Like, nah, I don't have to like that shit, man. No, but, but I the, want to. when I when I saw that 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 uh, that image you sent of uh, Clint Eastwood from Gran Torino. <laughs> The, the classic yeah. one. I was it's thinking like, like, oh wow, that's that was pretty much my face during the Starfield presentation. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's that was basically our opinions real yeah. quick on the other um kind of showcases yeah. conferences. But now we're gonna go to the Xbox Bethesda yeah. 2022 conference. Which and um Yeah. I I didn't, uh, I, I didn't I, like it. <laughs> yeah, I, I am I'm sorry. I'm no, sorry. I didn't like it. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I know I know people in the comments might mm. I'm just saying might be like, oh come on, man. They showed so many games. All these games are gonna be on Game Pass, and that's good, but I still yeah. can hold the opinion that these games that I'm seeing that you know I might like them, I might not like them, I might mm. think they're a piece of shit. Like I have a right yeah. to it, you know. Everyone has a right to it. I yeah, I I'm I'm very because uh, I've had two days to kind of marinate on it. I I'm more in agreement with you. I I actually would say you say a lot of people are, are gonna give a shit. I was actually when I did research beyond the, you know the because when I when I first looked at the video when I was about to watch it on Sunday, I saw the reception was extremely positive, and I thought okay. That's good as far as the the dislikes and the likes. And yes, YouTube, I can still see the dislikes. I found a way around it. So just Mm -hmm. you can enable that again, please. Thank you. So I saw that and I went, oh, okay, that is positive. That's good. That's a good sign. And I watched it. And at the end, I just thought, eh, uh." and then when I did research further after when I looked at more opinions, I was both surprised and relieved by the cuz I feel like the overall mixed the, the overall reception from what I've seen has been more mixed maybe leaning a bit more towards positive but definitely mixed more than I thought yeah, when I, I saw I hope, the initial reaction I really hope Phil looks at all the opinions and does and I don't know imagine if he says something like we need to do better 
And I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, I, and honestly, I'd be like, yeah, you do. Honestly, I, I might just be me. They, uh, for some reason, right? I was in the shower and I was thinking about the opinions and stuff. And I was like, might have just been me. I know, might be uh, quote unquote controversial, right? They should have held back a year. I'm sorry. They should have. Like, we should, because I'll tell you though. Next year, definitely going to get some better stuff, in my honest opinion, games-wise. I think they should have... So... Uh, but the thing, thing is, no one put a gun to Xbox's head and told them that they had to make a show covering only the next 12 months. That was their well, conscious decision. Yeah. 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 E3 wasn't this year. E3's next year. So I'm just saying maybe Microsoft could have just done like, yeah, been in that E3. You know yeah. what I mean? Do it in the fall of this year instead. When, oh, yeah, totally. when that, that next 12 months thing makes a lot more sense. But yeah, because uh, it's not as yeah. close. You know what I mean? Like, no. it's tough to wait like three to six months or whichever yeah. for these games to go on game pass. And I also don't buy the notion that we will get all of these games within the next 12 months, even taking out the, even taking out the, the Kojima thing, which we'll talk about much later. Yeah. I, I don't think I'm excited. To yeah, hear about. I don't believe that I I'd say maybe 90% of these will come out within the next 12 months. I have a feeling that Starfield's going to get delayed to, fall 2023 i have a feeling that it will there's just my gut instinct is telling me that and maybe a handful of other things but i don't i don't buy the notion that we will get all these games within the next 12 months but uh, the thing with the show as well is that i i can appreciate the general premise let's just say like call it like that the premise of this showcase that strictly features games coming out over the next 12 months. I don't think there's anything wrong with that in theory. I wish more people would do that because I'm sick to death of these games being announced five years in advance and then we see fuck all from them for two years and then they show up at E3 for three years and then it's finally out and then it's buggy and it's not, it doesn't run great. But... And then, or we do a, uh, a, what some people, quote unquote, is a Chad move, just like talk about it and then reveal it. And then we have to wait like 10, 15 years for it. Yeah. <laughs> Cyberpunk. Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy. And the worst thing, 15. the worst thing too is um, that I, I, that pisses me off, right? Is that nine times out of 10, when we do see it and it's all rushed like that, the developers are literally begging, like, this company we're working for is shit, yeah. you know, and it sucks. I think this general premise, though, of having the the games be only from the next 12 months, if you believe that, is that it highlights Microsoft's weaknesses when it comes to output and marketing. Because I think this show would have gone a little bit better if they had not announced so many things the last two years. Like... Uh, when I'm looking at the list of Microsoft games that have been announced over the last two years that aren't even out yet, it's it's enormous. The list is just huge. So ever since 2020, they have announced things like Forza Motorsport, Redfall, Starfield, Avowed, Contraband, Everwild, Fable, Outer Worlds 2, Perfect Dark, Hellblade 2, State of K3, and now this Kojima game. That that is way 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 too much to announce for us like not to see any of those for a number of years. And this will be the second year in a row where we don't see Avowed nor Fable. And this will be coming up on the second year in a row where we don't see Perfect Dark. And the only time we've ever seen these games is some CG bullshit. And I I give Sony plenty of shit for their their strategy of going away and being almost too quiet but the thing i will give playstation is that when i look at the games that were announced during the first six months from like the june june 2020 when they announced the playstation 5's lineup to and then that september showcase they did in 2020 before the november 2020 launch almost every single game they announced during that period has come out 
The only one that hasn't is God of War, Ragnarok. And that may or may not come out this year. Uh, Mm -hmm. So, the games themselves. Oh, okay. The the last thing I will say before we get into the games. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Whoever spread those Banjo-Kazooie revival rumors can go straight to hell. (laughs) They can go to hell. I know. Fuck, I know, the, like, fuck whoever I told, did that. I told, yeah, I told people, like, don't overhype shit. That's how you get all mad yeah. and stuff. I, I mean, saw that. Also, real quick, and, and I'll I say another like, thing I don't real believe quick. It. Yeah, I'll say my own take real quick. The the PC gaming show where people thought, like, they were going to do updates, like the Team Fortress 2, Day <sighs> Sex, Tomb Raider, and all what that. What the hell? That was, yeah, I know. That was nothing. That was just something to, co- co- what's the term? Commemorate? Those P- yeah, commemorate yeah. yeah those pc uh, characters because hey they made the pc gaming show you know what it was yeah but they only did the system shock remake and i'll give kudos that looks great that i like that good. one yeah everyone was shocked about them like yeah like yeah. look at the kickstarter they've been doing it since yeah. the kickstarter but uh sorry anyways that's just my piece <laughs> you know i'm again you guys are st- no offense, you guys are stupid if, like, you get overhyped over that. Stop sucking yeah. on the codium, copium, you know? Like That's another thing, too, with, with yeah. <laughs> this presentation, is that I give I give PlayStation a lot of shit for these state of plays where they tell you exactly what's going to be there, and they kind of deflate yeah, they a lot of the hype. Yeah, they and not CGI yeah. shit. Well, not know? only that, they, they set expectations accordingly, and I think, I think this... I think this showcase would have also gone down a little bit better if they had set the right expectations. If if Xbox had just been open and said, "Hey, this showcase, just a heads up," like like a couple weeks in advance, if they had just said, "Hey, this showcase will will strictly focus mostly on," because I, I the Kojima thing that it, it, I, mm-hmm. the Kojima thing throws that next twelve months right out the window. But if they had just said, "Look." 99% of the showcase will be things that we are ha- aiming to have come out within the next 12 months. And I think I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think that's that's better. It sets expectations accordingly. It it prevents people from going, "Oh, we're going to see Hellblade 2 and Avowed and Contraband and Perfect Dark and Fallout 5 and Elder Scrolls 6 and it's it's like just they need to manage expectations better. They set set that precedent. Like what PlayStation does. PlayStation will tell you exactly what's going to be there. Nintendo will tell you exactly what's going to be there. Xbox kind of has a problem with that. With with these yeah. showcases, at least. So, before I go on another t- tangent. Okay. Tangent. So, the first game that they showed was Redfall, which is from Arcane Austin. Coming out 2023. What did yeah. you make of this? I okay. I was surprised for one thing. Mm-hmm. I thought this was going to be a Left for Dead styled, you know, vampire game. Uh-huh. Which I was like, okay, cool. But apparently, it's going to be a Borderlands style yes. game. Which I was like, what? So like, you're, you're there's going to be big, kind of slightly bigger maps to explore and all this other stuff. I was like, I was like, okay, I can kind of see it working. You know, when I, I saw the, right the hindsight. Yeah, when I saw the loot and stats i went oh. i was like i was like oh god okay. no, <laughs> I, yeah like and I, was, I was like oh god here we go because it looked you know? like in the beginning when she was in the basement with that vampire or the attic with that vampire the team mm-hmm. of vampires it kind of had a doom flavor to it the way she was like strafing around and using the, the guns and then mm-hmm. the guy showed up and then the other two players showed up and it because I think I think this game would be a lot more appealing to me if it was just single player and if it was kind of a doom with vampires in this Massachusetts little town where you fight this horde of vampires. That that sounds yeah. interesting, but it, it's just yeah, it, it's just uh, weird because Redfall, if I would have done it, Redfall could have been like you could have been a vampire or a hunter and it yeah. kind of does. Because the thing is, uh, I'm recently playing like one Arcane's like older games, like like Arcs, Fatalis, like very great um, medieval styled RPG, right? Hmm. And I'm like, man, I wish like I'm just saying, I wish like um, Redfall was like this, more of a um, simulator RPG style thing, because mm-hmm. that's what they're no- that was what they were known for. Yeah, like look at uh, Dishonor, and I'm like, uh, I don't know. It's just like I feel like they're taking 
too much of a safe route, in my honest opinion. Yeah, that's exactly... That's actually a very similar opinion I have to the... So they, they the thing is, they, they bookended this showcase with two upcoming big Bethesda games, and both of them, I felt like, just looked very safe. And Redfall... It, this is the thing that I've start, I'm starting to realize with these games that take a long time to make, is that they map the bones of these games out like five, six years in advance. And the problem with the games that take this long to make is that times change and people kind of grow out of or, or stop caring about certain trends. I think if this had come out maybe six years ago as a, a shooter, like a looter kind of co-op shooter thing with a jokey vibe, I think it would have played better. But now in tw coming out in 2023, it just seems very bland. It just seems very no, yeah. me, like, look at me. I'm 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 a me too co-op shooter with <laughs> loot. It's yeah. and then but I was actually I was into it at first when they had when the, the stuff in the attic. But then when the trailer started leaning more into the co-op, and I don't really like the, the jokey tone that this appears to have. And no, then it's like terrible the, rap music comes in and it just uh, uh I know it's like you got and again, person like arcane really Again, it's a shot. It's just like with Obsidian and Grounded. Not that Grounded is a bad game, but I'm like, and I hate to say, but why would you make this game? Like, this doesn't feel you. You know, it's like you're yeah. for. It's like not saying Microsoft is doing it. That'd be more of an EA move. EA forces developers to do shit all oh, the yeah, time they until do. they're what do they try like a you know until like they're Bioware, <laughs> like a goddamn vampire. But until uh, they're anyways, Bioware. Yeah, if I yeah, if I would have done it, like I said, or I would have done it like a like a horror RPG where any you can choose if yeah. you want to be a vampire or a hunter, you like, know, like that's just it. You yeah. Know? So I wasn't. It looks fine, but I think this is one of those games where Game Pass is going to carry this thing. I think mm -hmm. this this would be a bomb if it wasn't on Game Pass. I think this would bomb harder than Deathloop did. I could see, uh, yeah, uh, the only thing too reminds me, I know Back for Blood, if people are fans of like, of course, like Left for Dead or Back for Blood, or of course Borderlands, and mm -hmm. you know, first person shooter game guys in general, they might have an interest in it. I'll give it a shot. Like, if yeah. it's like, uh, if it's like, uh, what is it? Is it pre-alpha or is it alpha? Like, what do they say? Because they if they said pre-beta, pre, that's technically... I think technically... pre-alpha. They said, yeah, yeah, so, or maybe it's alpha. I'd have to double check. Yeah, because they said pre-beta. I'm like, that's alpha. You're talking about alpha. <laughs> I know, I, I know, I saw alpha at some point during. Yeah, this yeah. Thing. So if they put out like a, you know, not a demo, but obviously like an alpha, um, closed or open alpha, then sure, I'll give it a shot. Yeah. You know? if, if it's free, the, the, yeah. the one, <laughs> yeah, the one thing that pissed me off too was like, um, Arcane making a big deal about that, um, girl with the power saying, oh. And I'm not meaning a gameplay standpoint. I mean a story written standpoint that she's quote unquote the best character. And I'm like, bro, when you say shit like that, I'm not going to play her. You can't <laughs> like let us let us decide yeah. if the character is good. Not, not don't get me wrong. I know you wrote her and designed her and all that, but I'm sorry, but no, just no. no. If you told me. Uh, okay, like hell, I'd rather take like Gabe Newell saying spy. My favorite class is the spy, and but yet he nerfs the shit out of him every time, <laughs> you know. But uh, but anyways, like I guess we can move on the next yeah. one. Uh, so or this be skip because you know what I mean. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Hollow Knight Silk Song, which this was a pretty good get for Xbox. So it's going to be on Perfect. Game Pass day one T T from Team Cherry, of course, to come in 20. I think they said 2023, but I, they might not have ended that with a. Well, then I guess it's next 12 months of the 2023. Mm -hmm. it's, it's certainly not coming out this year. Uh, but yeah, I, I've never played Hollow Knight. So I, I but I was more I was much more excited that for the people who have been clamoring to see Silk Song footage. I'm happy for yeah. them. That's that's really all I have to say about Silk Song. Yeah, same. And, yeah. Next was okay. High on Life from Which is like another Squanch uh, guys games. who made another guys who made the Rick and Morty stuff is making yeah. another game. Yeah. <laughs> which I I don't know. For some reason I just get 
Man, and, and the other one too is this is coming out in October, which I'm mm-hmm. like, if this comes out October seventh, I'm gonna lose my shit. If people are gonna start gifting at me, there's a play that, play that. <laughs> like, oh god, it looks weird. It it looks it definitely looks like it definitely looks like from the people who made Rick and Morty, especially the eyes. It's like it's always the eyes, man. They do it like that kind of normal white eye and then they put the little squiggly pencil black eye in yeah definitely that and Uh, uh, you know if i made it clear like i said i never what i don't know who writes rick and morty i forgot his name justin but i'm sorry Uh, what was his name justin roiland yeah justin roiland you are a terrible writer you should move no one likes (laughs) your writing you suck oh shit yeah Great. He's now not the, funny. He's now not the, funny. He great. thinks he's fucking funny. He's not. Now the Rick and Morty fan base is gonna throw. I don't se- care. Szechuan they can suck sauce. on their Mulan. They can re and suck on their Mulan sauce. I don't care. <laughs> They're gonna throw that Mulan sauce at my comment section. Uh, <laughs> uh, it yeah, it just it doesn't really look. I uh, for me, a little bit of Rick and Morty goes a long way. So, and I haven't watched it in a long time. So it's, but I I wasn't really. I wasn't really feeling the that last game that they did the the Trover saves the universe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I I'm not really like I said. I I can a little bit of Rick and Morty goes a long way for me. I can't really imagine sitting down myself sitting down and playing a full game of that kind of humor. It just doesn't yeah. really. Oh God. I don't know. It just doesn't really appeal to me. I can play a funny game if if it's funny. You know, Psychonauts Two is very funny, but. This? Oh, yeah, so I, uh, mm, no. They tried too hard. That's a, my Yeah, opinion. yeah. They tried too hard to be funny. It's it's the, the approach with Rick and Morty to me and, and Justin Royal and I guess as a whole is that his humor seems to be a lot of just throw a bunch of, bunch of shit at the wall to see what sticks. Just very lull humor, a lull random humor kind of thing. And it just... Again, a little bit of that goes a long, a very long way for me. That's all I really have to say about high on life. Yeah, same, I'm done. And then another thing Throw I don't. Your on sauce. Yeah, <laughs> another thing I don't really have a lot to say about is Riot on Game Pass. I don't care. Oh my god! Yeah, everyone so. on my comment section was pissed. They were like, "Fuck League of Legends." I don't. Fuck all this other stuff. You know. <laughs> no, I think the other thing too is that you get. All the champions and all the agents and all oh, this other yeah. free stuff on Game Pass, and it's like it's like it, you know, for once the PC guys are pissed, and I understand. Yeah. It's like all that shit for free, and we had to earn that. Yeah, like what the fuck, man? Yeah, it's uh, yeah. <laughs> stupid. I saw That's that, right. and I was I saw that, and I was very I was very surprised that they managed to negotiate that with Raya, and I went, oh. Okay. Okay, I can't imagine yeah. some. I can definitely imagine a lot of people are not happy about this as well. Mm-hmm. Next thing, uh, I'm very excited for this, but I don't really have much to say at at this point about it. I just oh wanted, yeah, Plague I just wanted Tale, to come out. Oh, so fucking cool. Yeah, doing a Plague Tale cool. Requiem. I I still they didn't give a release date. What the hell? Like yeah. it's coming out yeah, this we know year. It's like this year, but. It- this, I, I my estimation it might be like fall or winter. Yeah, next this that year. sounds about right. But it looks really good. I I, I like the first one quite a bit. I, I love that this studio that was mostly known for making Disney games and family friendly stuff is when they when they were given the chance to do their own thing they went and made one of the most disturbing grotesque games i've played in the last 10 years i find yeah. that hilarious it's it's a game where like rats claw their it's, it's a game that begins with a dog getting torn apart by rats and and a oh, family God. murdered in front of your eyes it's 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 i don't know what 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 unlocked in their brains working on the disney stuff like, let's just make the most fucked up shit we can I find that hilarious. I, I love it. My, my favorite times with Plague Tale is always pushing the guards to like um 
you know, get the rats to kill. It's funny. Uh-huh. He and the he and his she and her brother, right? The characters said, "No more killing the guards." And what does she do? She fucking pushes the guard to the rats, and you know what the rats do? They start eating him. Technically, the rat. She's like, technically, the rats murdered them. You the rats just murdered push them, them, not me. Push them in. Yeah. Oh man, gravity well, was the real enemy. Yeah. Okay, but I think uh, next one is um, we're going to be going into some vehicle games. Of yes. With Forza Motor- Motorsport. Which is shocking. This was shockingly one of the highlights for me. Oh, oh yeah. And then uh, for what was it? And technically speaking, I think this is not the... Uh, I don't want to spoil. This is not the only Forza trailer they right. showed off. Which, yeah. which surprisingly, people got pissed off at. Where it's like, come on, two trailers for two of the same game? Come on, man. They're not the same <laughs> game, though. Yeah, I don't want to see yeah, it. It's like, that's what it's spoiled because, but once they saw what they showed off for the second one, people then got excited. But again, don't yeah. want to spoil it. You guys can hear it, you know, yeah. when it comes in. I was, I was both like wowed by this trailer and annoyed because it looks so beautiful. Oh, look at these graphics. Yeah, graphics. it looks so beautiful and I loved the the autumn scenery and the the fairground at night imagery and it was annoying because I wanted those visuals paired with something that was much more my thing gameplay wise. If you if you make a an open world RPG with that kind of imagery, the the autumn atmosphere and the the play the the fairground at night, I would I would be all over that shit, but yeah, but it's tied not to, to spoil, Forza. Not spoil one of, remember, one of the Forza devs is making, you know, the Fable RPG. Yeah. So who knows? Who knows? But again, let's not spoil anymore. Yeah. And I guess know? this is exciting because this, this might be the engine that they're using for Fable. Possibly. Yeah, yeah, possibly. 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 I know it's a different studio from Playground Games, but it's, it's still Forza. So. Yeah. So next game, the the other vehicle game was Flight Simulator 40th Anniversary. Uh, Actually, again, another one where it looked gorgeous, but I know it's just not my thing gameplay wise. Just, oh, yeah. And also, too, yeah. don't forget that they, they are, what is it, they did show off that Halo vehicle for yes. Halo Infinite, you the, know, the, which the is Pelican. pretty cool, yeah. but it, yeah, it looked pretty cool. I mean, that was cool, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's it's cool for them, <laughs> yeah. I guess. Yeah, so. watch, watch for our PC is going to explode if we try to crank it up all the way. <laughs> I, I saw how many gigabytes Flight Simulator takes, and I just was like, no, thank you. How many gigs is it? Like, I think you it's know? I think it's well over 150 gigs. Oh my god! Some some crazy like that. But they're trying to render all of Earth, and now they're gonna do space with the Halo stuff. So I can only imagine it ballooning to something even higher. Mm-hmm. No, thank you. I'm good. Next thing. Uh, speaking of no, thank you. I'm good. It's Overwatch yeah. Two from those. Fucks it, Blizzard. I, sw- that I, I hate. said, I said this before. I said this before. If they did October seventh, I would have gone to Blizzard and be like, <laughs> "Change this now." I'm not doing this shit on my birthday. And not to mention the funniest thing that Razor's probably gonna have a chuckle at. Uh-huh. So they're doing the beta around June of yeah June this month, right? Yeah. And I think that's the same time that Team Fortress Two Summer Update comes out. Guess who do you think is gonna like, gonna win over? Oh. Like. Yeah, Overwatch. I'm a la- I think Overwatch. No, no, TF- TF2. No, because I, the last I time they Overwatch. did something like this, TF- Valve fans like completely over, over, you know, got really? over uh, Blizzard. Yeah. I'll see. I Some would, I would totally like expect that. Blizzard to be the one to to decimate Team Fortress 2 update. Yeah, which is a, still a surprise because again, TF2 see, still seems to like be winning even though they have not really done any kind of new content whatsoever yeah aside from the cosmetic you know updates still, it's still going strong i get i give it i give a lot of credit to the community yeah, which is fucking insane yeah so it's okay. october 4th in early access release of course they're going to do early early access how much do you want to bet they're going to over monetize it even as a especially as a free to play game now because that's going to give them that's going to give them the the pass all the excuses to all yeah the all the excuses, excuses the pass to over monetize the hell out of this well free to play guys we need to make our yeah. money it's like again like tf2 does the same thing and yet uh, to me they do it better than your shit 
Well, look at look at uh, Diablo Im- Immortal as well now, where you have to spend oh, yeah. ten thousand dollars to max no, out a character. 000. Oh, it's a hundred thousand. Oh my god! thousand dollars. <laughs> oh my god! Character. And again, I don't want to spoil, but we'll talk more about Diablo stuff uh, later in it. But uh, well, uh, let's move on before. Yeah, let's move on before <laughs> we get pissed off even more. So next one is Aura History Untold. Like, eh, yeah. yeah, it's like. It's okay. It's okay, but you know. I think uh, like the next few things are going to be like, eh, I pass. I pass yeah. Elder Scrolls yeah. Online. No. I mean, I, I uh, it's funny enough. I tried really? to play online for an hour, right? And I was like, eh, it's still not for me, unfortunately. Okay. Yeah. Fallout 76. I tried to play this for an hour and it was just pure garbage. I hated it. And the pit, this one pisses me off with the pit. The pit. Yeah. The pit. The pit was like right to me one of the greatest Fallout Free DLCs we ever got, and I feel like they just they just smushed. There's I know, look, I know Bethesda made it too. I understand, but at the same time, I that was old Bethesda. New Bethesda is like, yeah, we're giving you the pit. The pit you remember the bitch. pit? Does you remember the pit? The buzz the, does. The, the member the, the robots, all this other stuff. It's like, who gives a fuck? Bro? Bethesda is so creatively bankrupt now; they have to rely on member berries to get people excited for Fallout seventy six. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, and then the next thing, which is the the thing that they talked about with Forza, Forza Horizon Five, yeah. Hot Wheels DLC, July nineteenth. Uh which I think everyone was excited mm-hmm. about. They were like, "Oh yeah. my god, why don't they do more of this?" I think and, the um... last time <laughs> they did a Hot Wheels DLC was Forza Horizon Three. From what I saw, I could be wrong because I know Forza Horizon Four was the Lego one. Mm-hmm. And then this one's Hot Wheels again, so that's that's good for for fans. I, I assume the Forza Horizon Three Hot Wheels expansion was good. Otherwise, I don't think people would be very excited. But I don't really have a lot to say about this. It's, it's Hot Wheels. It's, it's, it, yeah, yeah it, it's cool. It's cool. Yeah, I think, yeah. I'm not. I'm not uh, knocking everyone, it. Yeah. I mean, I said before that like if you guys were like you know oh Grand Theft Auto Five, they have those really cool racing mm-hmm. modes you could do. This reminded me of that, so I'm like, it's cool that Forza Horizon 5, not saying they took it, of course, but this is yeah. really cool thing Forza Horizon 5 mm-hmm. did. Yeah. Uh, okay, and the next one is, again, this is hilarious. Arc 2, starring Vin Diesel. Speaking of Grand Theft Auto, one of the studios that is co-developing this is Grove Street, Street Games. Games. Oh my god, it's a total, it's gonna be a total shit show. <laughs> it is. And, and Arc Arc one is is kind of a shit show in some and, and, in, in yeah, technical like, shit show. It doesn't matter what I, I, to me. It doesn't matter what PC you got. It's not gonna run. No, Arc it's not. Two. I don't care. I've and seen Arc being played on because uh, because um my buddy dog really likes Arc and he plays it with um, one of my other buddies Manix and when they're playing it and I see I see them live streaming it the game visually looks fucking horrible. It looks yeah, it, horrible. It doesn't matter it what runs rig, like it doesn't ass, matter what rig you have. Yeah. yeah. Well, like, no, they're playing on console. Know. They're playing on console. Oh and my it looks god! Like, yeah, it, it looks matter. like total ass. I imagine the frame rate ain't, ain't so good either. No, <laughs> it's inconsistent thirty frames, which is just you might as well just stab me in my eyeball at that point. Yeah, it's like someone just please make a like a good like human dino mmorpg or sorry multiplayer game and mm-hmm. just dethrone arc already please yeah. no one wants that oh my god next so thing next one, oh, sorry, you go <laughs> oh, next thing is scorn which is the the obvious hr geiger influenced yeah which is really game? good i'm excited for this one i i'm cautiously optimistic because the last time they showed actual gameplay it looked kind of boring aside from the visuals it looked really rough so but that was over a year ago though to be fair yeah so i I hope saying though is like oh is this gonna be the right is this gonna be the right uh what is it release date are they actually gonna release it this time because like every time they they have to delay it (laughs) you know i I think so i mean yeah even if they were to delay it again, and again, this is the problem with announcing things too early. If they were to delay it again, it's, you know, it, I wouldn't say that's a bad thing necessarily, mm-hmm. especially if it's to make the game better. These days, I, I don't go, oh, God, a delay. I go, oh, OK, that's fine. 
whatever. I have a life. <laughs> I have a life outside of video games. I can, yeah. I can, I can wait. And I guess it's gonna yeah. be. A, it's still gonna be a timed exclusive for Xbox, which we've known about for a while. But it's. I think this was one of the ones that was announced during the 2020 time frame during with Xbox. I think. So again, another one. That, I know it's not first party from Xbox, but again, it's something else they announced way too early, and and now it's finally coming mm-hmm. out. Next thing is actually this was easily one of the best parts of the showcase for me, which is Flintlock, the Siege of Dawn. Okay, and I had yeah, no I'll... idea this was from the team that made Ashen. Yeah, what's I... that game again? I forgot. Ashen, it's, uh... it's a it's a Souls like game. Oh, yeah, it's pretty good. But I don't know why people again, like just what my friend Grohl and he makes sometimes the shittiest of pains. But he's like, oh, why is this like God of War? And I'm like, bro, don't. Like, please. God of like, War is influenced by Resident Evil 4. So, or, why, uh, yeah, like, why is this like Resident Evil 4? Every game, every game has, like, the over-the-shoulder the yeah, yeah. person over-the-shoulder action game. So Gears of War, like, yeah, Batman. Just stick to your Just yeah. Dance. <laughs> so, it, it looked... Flintlock, this game, it looked a lot like that Forspoken game coming out from Square Enix. Except yep. not ungodly annoying it actually looked yeah, really fun imagine like and the character no i think the character is voice she didn't yes. sound that bad she sounded no, like actually like, I, I would give a shit about her you yeah, know it was fine it was it was serviceable to what they were trying to accomplish as far as the atmosphere of that game which it looks very it, it, i think it's the 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 story is the this realm opens up and an army of the dead comes out from the mm-hmm. the yeah. the old gods or something and you have to kind of ban be the last hope for humanity and fight back against this army of the dead and uh, I thought okay that that's interesting it's gonna be on Game Pass and I'll give it a shot because it looks good and I liked Ashen as well so I I A forty four Studio they have a good track record as far as I'm concerned. Mm-hmm. Uh, speaking of another thing, uh, well, not another thing. I don't know why I said another thing, but yeah, it's, fine. Uh, it's, it's fine. the next thing. Actually, the thing after this, <laughs> this next thing will be another another highlight. But this one, Minecraft Legends, I don't I don't care. It's, yeah, it's, I was like, I, I, I said before, Minecraft, you can literally whatever. go to Minecraft and make a mod and then literally do what they're doing. Mm-hmm. There's no point in buying this game. Yeah. Plus their last spinoff that that Kitty Diablo one they did. Yeah, was, was like oh, horrible. It was horrible. It was just terrible. It was so boring and patronizing. Lackluster. Lackluster, Lackluster is is actually the the most positive adjective I can describe about <laughs> Minecraft dungeons or whatever the hell it was called. And again, they're, like they're I Diablo said, clone. you can mod, you can mod, mod, like yeah. go to a modded server and do exactly what they are doing. Yep. It, you you can. Know, it, it's so dumb. And I bet it's a uh, thousand times better than Minecraft Dungeons. Mm-hmm. So Lightyear Frontier was the next one, which is like, from a studio called Frame Break and Amplifier, an Amplifier game. which it looks really good. And it just, the the mix of influences looks very charming it's it's like they made a soup out of the right ingredients and these ingredients complement each other very well in a surprising way very charming very very colorful i love this this soup blend of of titanfall and stardew valley and slime rancher just the the visual of a mech farmer is so charming to me that I, I want to play it just for that it gives, alone. Yeah, it gave me bug snacks impressions. Yeah. From, because, yeah. like, it's not like, yeah, obviously it's like your mech kind of thing. It's like, if, yeah, it's like if Titanfall and uh, bug snacks had a baby, and then, but mostly was, it took over from bug snacks because I felt this very wholesome, positive yes. feel yes. about it. Like, exactly. everybody was having just a good time, yeah. you know? There's it looks no kind like of indication of danger whatsoever. No. Yeah, it looks it looks like one of those chill games that I can definitely lose myself in for a few hours a night. Very charming. I I love just the mix of influences: Titanfall, Stardew Valley, Slime Rancher, Animal Crossing, um, Harvest Moon, Bug Snacks, as you mentioned. So I'm 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 really looking forward to this. My yeah, only my day one. I think it's a it's day, a day one, one. Yeah. My only yeah, thing so is that it's early access. 
in spring 2023. And I usually don't play games in early access. Mm -hmm. I like to wait for the 1.0, but this might be one of those times where I have to say, all right, fuck it. <laughs> let's, let's try this out. Yeah. So I'll, I'll have you, you can say the next, I, I've, I've hogged the, yeah, the announcement. Sure. I can, I can say this one gunfire reborn by Dwight games coming out. Oh, another October one. Why is it coming out on my birthday? Month? They know it. They but, know. Uh, they yeah. Know. It's like, and I, I said it as a joke, but it's basically furry borderlands. It's actually a roguelike, from what I understand. Yeah, a furry Borderlands roguelike. That's furry how it is. Borderlands. Like. Yeah, <laughs> I know Max will probably like this game. Uh, okay. So next one is the last case of Benedict Fox by Plot Twist. This one looks really interesting. A mm -hmm. um Lovecraftian Metroidvania game. Lovecraftian. Oh, yeah. Because okay. like yeah, you got the yeah. Because right. You saw the trailer too. You could kind of get did, that yeah. feel, right? Yeah. I was so thinking I was like, more gothic horror than than Lovecraftian, but I would I, I would I have to go saw, back like, and. The Cthulhu, I saw the Cthulhu figure that was. Oh really? Oh. Yeah. So oh that's... okay. Yeah, yeah. So again, oh okay okay. The... Okay. <laughs> okay. If you see the cover now, I, I... you'll understand. Okay, because it Lovecraftian wasn't really like it that that influence wasn't really like clicking in my brain but now i can definitely see yeah. that now that i think more I, about the I, so, yeah i see i see like as soon as i see any kind of like supernatural or cosmic sea monster that looks like yeah. a yeah, sea monster yeah i say that's lovecraftian right yeah. there okay uh but again i'm excited for that and i think it's a day one yes it is um, it's a yeah, time so timed xbox console exclusive uh, as well um I'm excited for that one. It's, so the next one. Well, I, uh, I have one. Uh, I have one thing to say about but Benedict Fox before we move on to yeah, the, sure, the next sure. one. Because I, I have a little bit to say about the next one. Benedict Fox. I. I. This is one of those games. Another one that's frustrating for me because I love the vibe of it, but I'm not a Metroidvania person. There's just something about 2D Metroidvania that I just can't. I personally just can't click with, which just greatly annoys me because I want I want to play this because it looks so visually cool, unlike the next game. But it, it just it's just not going to I can probably kind of predict that's not going to be my thing as far as gameplay, sadly. Mm -hmm. but yeah, the next the next thing I'll this take one, it. Take oh, it away. God, as does <laughs> by interior night, July 19th. That's 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 <laughs> right. That was me and Razor. Like simultaneously <laughs> being like, yeah, this this uh, game is so it, it not okay. Like I don't mean bad. I don't mean to go in rant mode, but oh my go god, for it. this is the most fucking boring ass looking game I have. How can you even call this a game? And what you're expecting eight people to play this? Oh yeah, I was surprised yeah. by that. Like yeah, even my friend Grolin was going off. It's like, how are you people gonna make like eight people do this? Like what you gotta pass the controller around or some shit? Mm -hmm. Like. But you have to, or like <laughs> I think you can play it in first per. Uh, sorry, in a um, single player, one one person can go through this. I yeah, know, I know. It's just like it's just like what? So it's like this eight people choose a character they they play, and then I they think make so. the choices. Yeah. It's gonna be like I'm that like, new Quarry game that just came out from Supermassive. Yeah, I heard that was really good. That was really good. Uh, but, see, um, I've been I've been watching um Critical play it. It it looks just as goofy as everything else that Supermassive have done recently. Uh, <laughs> Oh God! But uh, again, like, and I don't care if people get pissed off. Like, if you want to play a good choice game, I don't know, go play like the early Telltale games. Yeah, go, go I was just back, thinking the Wolf Among back, Us. Yeah, just go play Wolf Among Us, please, please, and let's pray to whatever gods are out there. The Wolf Among Us Two is actually good. Yeah, that that will crush my heart if that that turns out to be crap. Yeah, this this might be. One of the most unappealing art styles I've ever seen for a game. That's not even like it's an that too. Animation. If you, if, I put it in uh, quotes. It's not even, you know, my friend Grohl was like, that's not even fucking animation. I could go read a comic yeah. book that's better than this shit. Someone someone on Twitter said it looked like a game made up of the GTA loading screens. Yeah. Like <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that's pretty close. Ugh. I know they're trying to go for this unique look, and I can respect the ambition. But the execution looks really unappealing to me. Especially too, like you got the characters that look like they're com they're moving comic characters. Yeah. And then you got the fucking CGI oh, yeah. cars and vehicles. Like what the fuck? The the little like Hot Wheels looking police cars that are in the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it just it just I don't I don't like there's something really 
distracting about that and then there's just this emotional disconnect from this because they're i don't like how they've been talking about this game because they they showed this during the the extended showcase thing today and the way they were talking about it i just it seemed so pretentious and then the the idea that apparently this game has themes of mature themes that have never that have very rarely been explored in games and i'm like "Uh uh-huh sure Sure, buddy. Sure. For some reason, this this game reminds me of um uh again. I'm sorry if I keep forgetting this one. It's Life like is that strange. Prison, no, no, the prison oh, oh, oh. game. A way out. Two. Yeah, a way out. For I'm just saying for some reason, right? And I'm like, that's another thing. Mm. Go play a way out. That is probably a thousand, of course, a thousand times better <laughs> than what this game is gonna. That would be a better be. co-op game than this. Yeah, <laughs> go play it. Takes so two. EA EA published that. Yeah. Like, yeah, we did. We didn't do anything wrong with it. We did, you know. Yeah, but, just, but still, I, we can move on. Yeah, just it just doesn't. So. They, they and they spent way too much time on this. I know. I know. This I is know. one of the only Xbox games coming out this year, but they spent way too long on this. And then during that extended showcase, they had this like staged bit where you have four of the developers playing it. And they were talking about it while they were playing it. Not like not like talking about it in a way like they were being interviewed, but like casual speak while they were playing it. Like, and the yeah, way I'm they gonna, were... I'm going to have this guy shoot this guy. Yes, like, that's, second, that's how they like... were. The, it's almost like they, it's like they were having some kind of very light debate on what, what they were doing. And then every time they made a decision, they were trying to lightly justify it to the people around them, even though they're the developers who made the fucking game. So they know what happened. It just... The way they presented it during the extended showcase was just so it, it was just it, it just reeked of them smelling their own farts from this game. So and again, staged, and so forced. Like, just, just no. like with Redfall, yeah, just like a Redfall, Papa Microsoft is like is like, oh, I gotta bail you out on Game this Pass. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> Game, Papa Game Pass, like, oh. Papa Game Pass? <laughs> Papa Game Pass coming to rescue as dust falls. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and speaking, speaking of, I feel like, in my opinion, another game that's probably going to have to be saved by Game Pass is Naraka Blade Point by 24 Entertainment. This actually has a lot of players on PC, from what I understand. Yeah, it's a it's like an Asian Battle Royale game, yeah. which, again, you guys know our opinion of Battle Royales. We kind of fell off it. What so, was I have a question for you? Yeah. What was the name of that battle royale that was shown off during a state of play last year where you have one of the characters that looks like Kung Fu Panda? What the hell was the name of that game? I know I can easily look I it up, no but I don't idea. I don't want to I, I don't want to spend the energy looking it up, but I was I was hoping you'd know just cuz I have no idea. Huh? I exactly I think that's the, the, this Naraka it looks a thousand times better than whatever that game was as far as these battle royale games where it looks almost like it turns into a, a fighting kind of thing where you use powers and strategy to kind of st- strafe around your opponent and that, that looked interesting it's just again like like you said battle royale I'm not I'm not going to play it. I'm all, yeah, I'm all battle royale no, out. I could be wrong. Apparently, there is going to be a single player story mode. To oh this. yes, that's right. I Which, did, that'd be yeah, cool. Yeah. Well, again, I, I can play that. for story mode. But after yeah. that, I have to pass. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um. Oh, I'm excited. I got to say this. I am one. too. The next one is Pentamin Obsidian Entertainment coming out November 2022. This is going to be apparently. I think this is like Josh Sawyer's mm-hmm. dream project. He's always wanted to make this, which to me it looked like a Monty Python RPG. <laughs> it, uh, which I'm like it, excited. You know? This is. I did not expect something like this, which is great. When he said he was working on something great, I imagined it being you know the the typical. You know, 3D RPG, maybe action like RPG. New Vegas, yeah, like maybe stuff, maybe yeah. uh maybe a isometric RPG. But I didn't expect this this kind of uh, 2D animated with this unique looking old history book art style. And it's set it's a, it's apparently it's a murder mystery set in in old Germany, mm-hmm. set across 
like 25 years or something like that and it just the more i hear about this game the more i read about it the more i want it and i already really wanted it after this first trailer i feel like this is the if you're if you guys are fans of obsidian i feel like this is the perfect beginning palette cleanser yeah. before we get to play avowed. Uh, avowed yeah which is like yeah so so imagine like if i have such a good time with this and i'm like fuck it like if they want to make imagine avow comes out like fall next year i don't mm-hmm. give a shit i got pen in to keep me company you yeah. know i think this is going to be a game that will show how good the people at obsidian are at writing and world building I think this will be because they can't rely on fancy 3D graphics or big, like large open worlds. They have to they're working within limitations. And I think that's this kind of thing is going to bring out a lot of creativity from them. And I'm excited to see it. It's always like the thing with RPGs that I love the most is that if their limit, if even if they have limits, they just basically do their strengths within those limits. Great creativity comes from great limitations. Yep. Or can. And then speaking speaking of limits, we got a grounded by Obsidian Entertainment, yeah. which is like if people are confused about the oh wait, it's already out. Well, early access. The yep. 1.0 is coming September of this year. Mm-hmm. Which I'm like, um apparently though they they I could be wrong, they are doing an end game, so you can actually shrink back to normal or sorry grow back to normal which is it's good sure, yeah. that's actually that's actually nice you know because i i always hate that about those like survival games where's the end game what do we do you know around the end yeah you know and uh, then but yeah it's like it's, it's it's all good i'm still surprised that how well they were able to do this and if people actually like grounded but hey I'm no, no ill will yeah I, I you know if i could play this with friends i'd probably have a good time with this game too it it's a no. it's a fun time if you if it's a fun time if you like this kind of game but if you're somebody like me who is not a big survival person it's fun for a little bit but it's d- disposable in in my mind it's i understand why obsidian wanted to do it they wanted to try something different that's okay, but and this was never going to be one of their big next games. They had a yeah, small team working on it. Kind of a a fun, my yeah. opinion, fun cost effective experiment. Yeah, and it, it did pay off. I yeah. feel like it paid off. I it's, hope Pendleman pays off. You know, again, it's like another experiment they want I to do. I think it's twenty dollars from what they said. So yeah. it's not. It's not. It's not like a fucking sony thing where they're gonna be like oh a game 70 dollars it's it's no this is a more yeah a budget again, smaller you can play game day one uh game pass as yeah, well so don't worry too. about like yeah don't worry about like oh they're gonna jump up the base price you know because no. of the full release i'm like nah i don't think so no. they know they know their thing yeah they know their limits they're not they don't again they're not like bethesda and they're not no. like activision all these other companies they're not gonna Ubisoft, blow the fucking yeah, price yeah so the next thing was this game called Arabin Shadow Legacy, and it apparently uh, baby it is Robot Games. <laughs> yes, I love that name. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's a stealth platformer, and yeah. we don't know a whole lot about it, but it it looked again. This was another one that had a very unique vibe, and it just it just simply looked fun. So I'm I'm interested in playing it. I liked how fluid the I liked that mechanic where you 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 become a, a shadow and then you're gliding along the wall trying to avoid the spotlights. I thought that looked really yeah. cool. And then when they did the, me, the combat, it looked cool as well. Mm-hmm. It gave me like Assassin's Creed Dishonored two vibe. Yeah, yeah, Dishonored. Where, um, yeah, because again, I I spam the fuck out of the shadow ability. So I'm like, I was like, okay, so that's basically what this character does. You yeah. Know? It's a long blink, basically. Oh yeah, uh, off topic, but Razor, they do mm-hmm. have the Disrail Humans Two demo if you want to enjoy that oh. shit on Steam. Okay, I will definitely give that a look. Yeah. Thank you. I didn't I'm know. I'm gonna that. do that tomorrow on my stream. So yeah, but anyways, let's move on. Uh, <sighs> give me a second. Oh yeah. So okay, now here we go. Diablo Four. Oh. <laughs> Are you excited for this? Only, it's kind of. I hate to say forced excitement because, like, when my friends get excited, then I kind of go along with it, you know? Right, that's fair. They're certainly, they are Blizzard fans, you know? They uh, play World okay, of Warcraft. Okay. 
they play World of Warcraft. They play. I think that's it. They usually play World of Warcraft. Mm-hmm. They they saw the the trailer for Diablo Four, and then they went ecstatic, creaming on the floor, ecstatic. You know, yeah. over my brother certainly got excited over oh, it. Yeah. You know, that's that's fine. I'm 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 happy for them. It's it's. I have a I have a, one of my good friends. He's a big Overwatch to Overwatch fan. And mm. when he was watching the Xbox presentation, I didn't see like, oh it until god. much. Yeah, yeah. He he said, "Oh well, my god, it's amazing! I'm losing my mind." And I just told him, "That's nice. I I won't rain on your parade today uh-huh. because it's it's a similar case with Overwatch too, which I I look at now. To be fair, uh, the mm, yeah, <laughs> I've always liked Diablo's visuals, but I don't like these kind of loot based games i'm not a fan of that as far as gameplay it just doesn't and i tried playing diablo 3 for a while with friends it just i just i can't get into this kind of game i actually like i did like i'm not gonna lie i did like diablo immortals gameplay but then i heard about again the whole um microtransactions and live services and it's like and again like we discussed it's a hundred thousand dollars to fully level your character i'm like nope i'm out fuck yeah. this shit i, I just the one rumor yeah sir don't mean to interrupt you no, but no, the no, one you're... rumor you're... the one rumor and i'm scared shitless of this is those microtransactions and live services they might move it to diablo 4 and i'm like oh boy here we go they can confirmed... it wouldn't be out of blizzard's no, it wouldn't it be out of Blizzard's like thing. Me, like, yeah, we gotta put those live services in Diablo Four. Oh, that's that's absolutely what I. That's absolutely what I assume I'm they would do. I'm, that's what I'm scared to yeah, do. Yeah, but I, I've heard that they, the only kind of microtransactions apparently that they're doing in this is, is the usual skin priced skins or priced cosmetics. Yeah, skins, the... mounts, that kind of thing. They did a World of Warcraft, yeah, so which... it wouldn't be like out of their reach. I I have to wonder, just because <laughs> I don't trust Blizzard, I of don't take I, I. No one should trust Blizzard. No one should trust Activision. No one should trust actually any of these companies. But I especially do not trust Activision Blizzard and to take them on their word. They they have lied repeatedly in the past. They have a well documented history of lies, especially Blizzard. After that whole Warcraft three crap, after the whole Diablo Immortals thing, I I do not trust Blizzard. I do not expect this game to release without some kind of major caveat to it. Yeah. Especially like sign up, you could sign up for the the pre beta right now, yeah, or like the alpha beta, whichever. Which I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, I'll give it a shot, see what kind of bugs, glitches. Yeah, I don't expect I don't expect Bethesda level bad shit. No, 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 not Blizzard. Well, you, surprisingly, Blizzard usually doesn't do I that s- kind of expect that kind of shit from Blizzard. You I know? expect worse in a different way, actually. Yeah, just just more. They're more the whole. Oh, we're just gonna you know sticking on this whole yeah greedy microtransaction shit yeah this this was one of the this is one of the highlights for a lot of people this was one of the big low points for me cuz i i was so i was so confused why they were giving this the spotlight i know microsoft's going to buy activision blizzard by the time next year but i just i thought just them spending this again it's similar to as dust falls where they just spent way too much time on this and it just I I don't care. Diablo Four Blizzard can get fucked. Blizzard can get fucked. Part two. That's really all I have to say about Diablo Four. Okay. And uh, (laughs) I guess like to me, speaking of a game that somehow turned to shit but actually is doing really well right now, Mm -hmm. Sea of Thieves season seven by Rare. Yeah. It's It's, uh, coming out July. Have you ever played Sea of Thieves? Yes, I did. I okay. played the alpha. It was fucking okay, terrible, yeah. and yeah, I the alpha and, I, and I promised myself. Yeah. I promised myself I wouldn't play it again. My Australian friend, he has been recently playing season six, and he says, "Oh my god, it's so good now." It's like that's good. That's good yeah. for him, you know. It is. It is fun if you have a team of people to play with because you can get drunk, you throw up on each other, you can steal boats, <laughs> yeah. you can dig for treasure. 
I really liked the the Pirates of the Caribbean quests that they had. Those there's one the 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 first mission is basically a boat ride to this island and then when you get to the island you go into the cave and they start to play the iconic audio from the Pirates of the Caribbean ride from Disneyland which I know it's a huge member berries thing but considering it is a Pirates of the Caribbean themed DLC I thought it was just awesome how they did that when you walk into the cave and that music starts to play and you can tell you can tell that they have a real respect for the legacy of the ride and the movies that this DLC is based on. I, I really appreciated that. So I it, it, see if these won some points for me in that that respect. But it's just again, it's like like a typical live service. It's just it's something I play for a little bit. I dabble in a little bit and then I move on. That's just kind of how I am with live services. It's just like, OK, I'll play it for a little bit. And then we, I just I move on because I have something else to play. Uh, the one thing that I always still criticize mm. is that I think it should have been a good idea for us to customize our characters in the beginning, not yeah. just choose a pre-random one. I think the game should have been free to play in the beginning as well. I think that yeah, would have saved uh, them a lot of headache. Yeah, good thing I waited because, again, they are going to make it free to play. So thank yeah. God for that. It's, it's, a, it's a fun live service. Like I said in my, in my predictions video, this is one of the more unique live services out there because there aren't there aren't a lot of pirate fantasies out there. Uh, next thing is this game Ravenlock from Coco Cucumber. It's a weird, weird. Which is uh, name. yeah, which is I'll, I'll be frank. I actually really like the appeal of this game. Okay, it looks, it looks really good, and it's more of a. Um, kind of, I hate to say, it's almost like um, the Alice uh, Madness yeah. kind of game vibe, but more of a, very they awesome kind of yeah. dial it back a bit, but mm -hmm. they still keep that very creepy, now, I, no, I especially when I saw the Queen of Hearts, I'm like, oh my god, Razor needs to see this, you know, because it's like, gives me a Bloodborne vibe <laughs> over with this thing, you know? It's a very, it, again, this, this is another one that, I love the look of it. I'm just not sure the gameplay is going to be for me. That's and it makes me sad because I, I love I, I like Alice in Wonderland. I like the imagery that it has. It's just. <laughs> make make games that that, that both appeal to me, appeal to me, <laughs> that, like visually or really like these that appeal to me, please. That would that would be lovely well, visually and gameplay wise, yeah. please. Another one that I think looked great, but I'm not sure about the gameplay yet, was Cocoon, which is from the one of the design, the big designers from Play Dead, which is the team behind Limbo and Inside. And I, I like Limbo. I love Inside. And this is not it's something very different from those games. This is a world within worlds puzzle game from Annapurna Interactive and Geometric Interactive. And it's a timed console exclusive for Xbox. I'm curious to see more of this. I would like to know what a 20 minute stretch of raw gameplay from this looks like. Mm -hmm. That will Same. be like the, de the deciding factor on this for me. Yeah, I don't really have a lot to say about it. So yeah. I'll, I'll let you lead with the, the final the final stuff. OK, so the next one we got is Wolan uh, Fallen Dynasty by Tim ne <laughs> Tim. Team Ninja coming out uh, next year. Mm -hmm. Now, this one, again, this one I kept joking. I was like, oh my god, we're just gonna see it. It reminds me of Bloodborne, you know? <laughs> and the one thing, though, I'll say like this, while it looks really, really good, and again, I love Team Ninja. They're awesome. But the one thing that pisses me off, really, about this game is that if it, it, apparently, uh, don't quote me on this, but apparently, it's a Dynasty Warrior side game. And I'm like... What? really yeah like really and apparently the the final character you see in the trailer is a dynasty warriors character and i'm like i don't know who the oh. fuck this guy is and again i'm i'm like you got this really nice you know asian um horror aesthetic going in and yeah you know, i love that kind of aesthetic but again it's like oh god because I, I hope to god it's not like oh fight all these jumbles of enemies and do the same shit over and over again and, and also and then Oh, and then do the same thing, but oh, there's a fight. There's a boss you gotta fight. Like that's not fun to me. 
It really is dead. My my reaction to this trailer was basically, oh, this looks interesting. What is it? <laughs> and I never really I, I heard it was a like an action RPG or something like that. It, it just I, I need to actually see how this runs to get a better idea of what I'm getting myself into with this because Team Team Ninja. They, they're a really interesting studio where they, I feel like in terms of quality, they're kind of like, they, they've definitely zigzagged over the years where you have, you know, the first two Ninja Gaiden games and then you have shit like Ninja Gaiden 3 and Strangers of Paradise, Final Fantasy, and then, then it's like uh, up again with Neo. So we'll, we'll see about this. I, it's a good trailer. I feel like it's a damn yeah. good trailer. It looks very. For some reason, I thought this was like a Oni Mosha game. If anyone, that's what I thought too. Yeah. yeah. Well, granted, again, I believe Sony would have uh, revealed that. I could be wrong because mostly, like, people play it on. Uh, well, it's a Capcom game. They would have showed it on yeah. their own showcase as well. But uh, yeah, it's not bad. But again, my interest just went down when I heard the rumors of the Dynasty Warriors side game. But mm. but again, like I said, as long as the gameplay isn't bad and it's like it keeps that horror aesthetic, makes it really like, oh my god, I'm scared. Even though it's action, you could still make it scary to fight these guys. You know, mm -hmm. I uh, but, yeah, I just that, need that's to see more. For me. I I didn't yeah, really have same, much. I need to really see more. I didn't, yeah, I, I didn't really have much of a reaction to this trailer other than, oh, that looks neat. What is it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that was it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, this one this one <clears throat> is uh, going to get people excited. So Persona 3 Portable, Persona 4 Golden, and Persona 5 Royal Atlas all coming into, uh, I believe, Xbox. You know, Xbox Game Pass. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be on PC, of course. Yep. And then I think I heard later on... It is going to be Steam. It's going to go on Steam, and then they yes. also said PS5 as yes, well. Yes, they did. A no, so no big, Switch. Big Persona update. Yeah, I know. No I know. My Switch. My friend Roland, who's a Switch, who's come a Switch on, feed. come this on, guy, Atlas. He was so he was so pissed oh, off. My, come on, I think Atlas. Mike, my friend Mike was pissed off too. He's like, "Come on, what did the Switch? The Switch can handle it." Which I was like, yeah, "I don't know. Totally it might just be." I don't know. It might just be me. I don't know if the Switch can... I know the Switch can handle 3 and 4. I just don't know about 5. It's just my opinion. The you know? Switch The Switch can play fucking Super Mario Odyssey at 60 frames. That's true. It, that it can handle, true. It can handle true. Persona 5 Royal at 30 frames. It totally could. So we'll get 5 in October 21st, which is cool. That's yeah. really good. Mm -hmm. And then next year for 4 and 3. I I feel like this should have been a slam dunk for Atlas, but of course Atlas being Atlas, it's like there have to be caveats to this, of course. Yeah. Where it's not it's not Persona Three the normal version, it's portable, which has the two D environments instead of the three D. Which I don't know why Atlas is doing portable but not three D, and yet they're not even putting it on switch which okay and then apparently it's not even on none of these are have been announced for playstation 4 from my understanding it's only five and i know i know persona 5 is already on playstation 4 it's been on playstation 4 for many years but three and four are not so to have three and four not go to ps4 and only go to ps5 just seems like a really weird move for them. And then I just think I, I wonder too if the PS5 version of Royal is going to have a free upgrade or we're going to have to pay for oh, it again. I do hope so because that'd be kind of a dick move. They're like, yeah, no, you got to get a PS5 whatever. Yeah. Because again, yeah, like people, it's it's hard to mm. get these new consoles. It you is, know, yeah. it's hard to get them for for market retail price. Mm hmm. They spend probably thousands of dollars because of idiot things that like, uh, let me just uh, scrounge these up like the rat that I am. You know, <laughs> <laughs> fucking rat. <laughs> yeah, rat. So I I I'm I'm happy for the people that are 
going to finally be able to play Persona 5 Royal. Like, if you're one of those people that have been insistent on never buying a PlayStation 4 and playing this game, here you are. Your patience has been, or your stubbornness has been rewarded. So, it's it's finally here. And then we move on to the final two things, which oh, yeah. these, these uh, two okay. things are like. I'll, I'll talk about the second, <clears throat> the, the second to last one, but that the the next one you can talk about. Here we which, go, everyone. Which, Here which, we go. <laughs> this is like these last two for me, because so the 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 penultimate game that they showed was this long rumored but still untitled Kojima Productions game. That they're doing with Xbox. Who the hell knows when it's coming out. Um, I feel like this should have been. A huge mic drop moment. This should have been. Right? Because you're having Kojima make an exclusive Xbox game. And and like. And I could be wrong. But apparently it's a horror game. Yeah. People were like oh my god. Yeah. It's a horror game. Like you know. So then they go. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be Silent Hill. But then um, no, it's, I'll, it's... Let you, I'll let you. Yeah, I'll let you. I'll let you go for what it actually is. So uh, it, it's uh, uh, about about a week before, or, or not a week, a couple of days before this event. There was a a huge leak where it was announced that Kojima was working on this game called Overdose. That it, apparently it's starring uh, Mark Margaret Qualley, who was played Mama in Death Stranding, and it had fleet footage that apparently journalist Tom Henderson got his hands on from a, a, an un, un, obviously an anonymous source. No idea where this anonymous source came from, but that's okay. The The footage apparently has Margaret Qualley like look walking through a series of dark corridors and it, you can be, it can be played in first and third person and there's a jump scare. And then the title it says game over and it goes to, uh, over overdose uh, Hideo Kojima game and I figured that is what we were going to see like I knew Kojima would be here I knew he would I didn't I didn't want to say it in the the predictions video because I, I actually cut that out because I wasn't sure if it was going to be here or at the summer games fest thing mm -hmm. considering he and Jeff Keighley are like BFFs for life but when it sh didn't show up at the Summer Games Fest thing, I was like, okay, I'm 99.9% certain that it's going to be here at the showcase, the Xbox thing. And then to have, but, but to have, <clears throat> I knew Kojima would be one of the last announcements. So I said in the video, the thing where I was like, I know if, if that game is here, I will be very happy. And that game technically was here, but it was delivered in the most flat, blue balls way you could have possibly done a and also and, like i'll say too is that like we both said i and you know I, I, I correct me if i'm wrong i jokingly said it was going to be oh i guess kojima's gonna do that cloud-based technology or cloud-based game you're like oh god please don't say that because it might come true and oh <clears throat> uh, well i I, I, yeah. I had heard the rumor about a year ago that kojima was going to work on an episodic horror game with Google when Stadia was that oh, its God. height. <laughs> oh, God. But then, God. of course, once Stadia got the shit blasted out of it and Google abandoned it, Kojima, I guess, still had that idea. He still had the bones of the idea. And he went to Xbox and they signed the, the, the leaked letter of intent. And now it's official that he's going to be doing a cloud game. I don't know if this is the exact same game. I don't even know if Overdose is the ex if is the product that's going to come out for for Xbox, but it it's just you know it's just it's just my luck you know for me to get finally a Kojima made horror game. I don't even give a shit that is coming to Xbox only. I'm not gonna sign that fucking stupid petition. From these Sony fanboys that are like, we must cancel Kojima's game from Xbox. Shut the fuck up. Just shut the fuck up. <laughs> buy a PC. Yeah. Buy an Xbox. I, just I shut the you. fuck I up. Feel, yeah. It's just my fucking luck that Kojima finally announces his horror game with Xbox. And 
then he talks about cloud gaming and cloud technology and yeah. i just go oh oh no I can't believe though I was right. I was joking about that, saying that Kojima was gonna use quote unquote cloud based technology. Yeah, when when because you know, and I've heard people t I've heard people too defend this and like oh well you know games use cloud based technology to render things and stuff like that and I'm like and no the and <laughs> the reason I'm much more concerned about it being a bigger role in this game is because he led with that before we even saw. A tight. We don't even have a title for this. We have no gameplay. We have no, no genre. Trailer. No trailer. No, trailer. no genre. No. Not even any CG bullshit. What is the first and foremost bit of info that we have about this game outside of it being an Xbox game? Cloud-driven technology. That's what he led with. So it, yes, like, this is going to yeah, be a cloud like game. Crackdown free shit. You know, reminds me of that shit. That like too, oh god, yeah. you know that as well. Yeah, and it's just. Are you fucking kidding me? This this is how they want to announce Kojima's next project. No title, no gameplay, no CG bullshit, n nothing. It's nothing. It's, it's just a big old a, nothing. It, I don't know. Like, it's weird because it reminds me of, what is it? Again, another company that likes to do this where it's like, no gameplay, just telling you the project. Yeah. That's it. This and was like a I, Square Enix announcement. Yeah, exactly. It's a Square Enix move. Yeah. Why would you? It's like, why would you guys do this? Like, what you you? I hate to say, yeah, you, you wasted Kojima's time with this. Kojima could actually be working now, and you're telling him, yeah, Kojima son, can you just uh, just talk to the camera and tell him about this? Like, okay, uh, <laughs> can you go on? Can to. you go on Skype real quick and just tell people you're working with us, please? Like, okay, but anyways, yeah, yeah. Th anyways. This this Kojima thing was like, if you're about to have like really great sex and then your partner just <laughs> randomly farts and walks out of the room yeah that's it. or it's, it's like, like or it's like it's like that meme about the guy about that sex with his like the you know his like kind of lover he saw at the bar and mm -hmm. then he looks at a picture and then it's just like a Ugh. waste of time no it's like something <laughs> ugly and then he just runs off that's basically what this felt like when i was watching it a big waste of time big complete waste of time waste of potential and it just um, it just threw that whole notion of them like oh we're only gonna show games that are coming out within the next well, twelve months out the fucking window which makes me question why did they even do that to begin with if they were gonna have this Kojima thing there you know yeah, it's it's like uh, when it's like when Sony does their thing where they're like oh we only want to show games that have actual gameplay we can show off okay that's respectable then why the fuck are you showing Spider Man two and Wolverine at your your showcase. I I just uh, this that that whole thing was just I'm telling you, it's just it's, it's blue balls, man. I don't know what to tell you. It's just I just I have dry balls, Claylex. After that announcement, I just, especially like just, especially like for imagine yeah. like the worst the worst thing that would have happened to imagine if like uh what what's that developer that people hate now that Yan Yia was reporting on abandoned house or oh uh, no blue, blue box. Blue, yeah, imagine if Blue Box yeah, did something them. like that. Then people would be pissed off. Because, <clears throat> like, they keep yeah. going on and on about their shitty as fuck probably game, and it's like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> probably, probably, yeah, the yeah. CEO I heard is a piece of shit, too. Yeah, so. he's a he's a fucking scam artist. War yeah, yeah, okay. I'm sorry, but let's not get... Uh, let, before our anger seeps even further, let's go on to the last thing, which is, again, a big... Uh, uh, Starfield with Bethesda, and uh, I'll let Razor take yeah. it away, and then I'll say oh. my piece. So earlier in the show, in the in the beginning, there was this weird bit of hyperbole where Sarah Bond, who's the the I think she's the leader of of content at Xbox or something like that, mm -hmm. she said that this Starfield game was the most anticipated open world RPG of the last 20 years. Uh yeah, no. And and, and apparently too. <laughs> and again, I I could I I I'll hopefully I'm not wrong about this because again, we know Todd is a fucking liar, but apparently mm -hmm. Todd has been thinking about doing this game since 1997. And I'm like, sure Todd, no. sure. I don't believe I think maybe the kernel of the idea. Just, oh, I want to make a space game. Oh, okay. That's nice, Todd. Yeah, because it's not like a lot of space trade simulator games. Like, you know what? 
I want to try to make a game something like this. And then mm -hmm. I guess it ended up turning, you know, into Starfield. Yeah. So I, I actually think I actually have a, a lesser opinion of this game, even compared to a few days ago when I first saw it. I don't think this game looks good at all. The combat looks fucking horrible. I hate the gunplay. It looks like cyberpunk at its worst. How, Actually, yeah, worse it's like than how, cyberpunk at its worst. Oh my god, yeah, like, how do you... Okay, yeah, I'd be like, guys, how do you make the combat worse than, than cyberpunk? Not to mention, I felt the combat is worse than Fall 4. How do you yes, it is. Up, it, it looks how worse. How do you fuck up the com... Uh, Fall 4 was okay. I'll say that okay combat, in my opinion. But, oh my god, how did you fuck that up? Combat has never been Bethesda Game Studios' strong point. And to see them lead with that in this, that was just a bad first impression right out of the like, game. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll always give credit. Like, RPG combat is usually hit or or miss. Not yeah. even, like, sometimes, even if it's a hit, it's not the best, which I'm fine. Again, that's not what, what me playing RPGs is for and stuff yeah. like that. Again, that's fine. But holy fuck, like, at least something to, like, keep me bad. occupied when I fight fucking enemies yeah. it, it like, looks, I, i'd rather bad. go to fall new vegas like that shit was better yeah and that that, that has like you know uh decent uh, average combat at like, least fallout at least fallout has the vat system that they can lean on this yeah i don't think this is gonna have anything Hell, like I'll, that, I'll say so. another one i don't care i'll say another one outer worlds had better combat than this yeah shit. It, did, it did it did and it did have it, and again better. it could lean on it could it had its own vat system so even if the combat wasn't nitty oh, gritty yeah, it did. at least it had yeah at least it had something to fall back on yeah and and just the the terrible visual presentation as far as the the frame rate hitching that was really distracting the the game just as far as this this upgrade to the creation engine i am not i'm not seeing it i'm not seeing this big next leap forward creation for bethesda mm -hmm. yeah i'm not seeing it and the facial animation still makes everyone look like they have Botox and fish eyes. They brought over all the annoying gameplay bullshit from Fallout 4 that I didn't like, like the base building uh, and the crafting like, and, and just and then and then the, to cap it all off at the end, they then had to do this like large truck tiny dick energy with the visit over a thousand planets thing and I just Which is like oh, oh no. god, I was like and everyone's uh, yeah, mm -hmm. I kept hearing many like no man's sky rip off no man's sky rip off or even no even the funniest one a comment i saw was dead game 2023 <laughs> which was oh i, I want to, i want to be proven wrong too about this because i really do and i'm not just down on bethesda just for the sake of it i i loved bethesda's games growing up when i was in yeah i love middle school i love Morrowind. High school. I yeah, love, yeah, oblivion i love skyrim i love fallout 3 skyrim was okay yeah i love fallout uh free you know obviously i even but, like fallout uh, 4 to an extent it's it's there, there fine are a few things oh sorry you go <laughs> yeah it's fine in in some and in, in most respects it's just i think this was the thing when when they're like oh let's bring in crafting let's bring in resource management let's bring in base building and i'm like that's not what i want out of fallout but but okay and and maybe it makes more sense in starfield having you know the, the customizable base customizable ship the 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 crafting maybe it might make more sense but i don't find them fun i don't find them enjoyable and i i want to be proven wrong like i said but this this showcase of it did fuck all for me and I simply don't trust modern Bethesda. Not to mention, when it comes and to a huge not to mention, the, the quality and frame rate. Looks, it might have been the stream or whatever. Bad. It was horrible. Bad. It was horrible. When, when he started yeah. shooting the, the, the enemy on the platform and then did that rocket jump in the air when there yeah, was like that, an explosion. Rate, oh, it, everyone, yeah. everyone was saying, oh my God, the frame rate is going so bad right now. <laughs> it just looks so bad. And it, I... Obviously, it will look ob objectively. It will look better running at sixty frames on PC. This better fucking run sixty frames everywhere, even on. Uh, is it coming to? It's it's only going to be on next gen, isn't it? Uh, only on Xbox Series. Yeah, X, I believe I, I believe PS Five, Xbox okay. Series X, okay. and a PC on Series S. This better be the only option for this. Better be sixty frames, because if this if this is going to be limited to thirty frames on Series S. 
Oh boy, it's ew. Yeah, oh my Xbox God. fans are gonna be pissed. Yeah, and I I learned my lesson with Fallout seventy six. I don't trust Bethesda. I don't trust Todd Howard when it comes to presenting their games anymore. And I was genuinely surprised by how positive some people's responses were to this. That should know better by now. And I'm talking I mean, yeah, like I'm talking like a lot of like professional uh, games media people that came especially out. Especially like professional like, it's amazing. Also, like RPG YouTubers, what? especially like guys. Come yeah, on. Admit, I, I I was really surprised by I I know um I'm not I'm not trying to to take a shit all over him. I like I like Mr. Matty plays but and but he I I like his podcast that he does with um uh, Cognito from from Iron Lords. Yeah, the, I was gonna say exactly the same too. What and, was it too? I was really shocked by how positive they were about it because it just I don't know if it's just like I I don't know I just I, I I just it's don't <laughs> I just don't I just don't understand how anyone can look at this and go wow that looks awesome. Again, I went for Twitter, right? And I did see a guy that did get fired, but he said, yeah, apparently, again, take him a grain of salt, but apparently, like, Reset Era, he was making, like, a lot of these claims. Oh, yeah. Says, mm -hmm. I did. It was like the flying was shit, the, gra the, the shooting was below average, all this other stuff. And I was like, yeah, I could totally believe this guy. I, like, yeah, I know it sounds iffy, but at the same time, like, this is exactly what I imagined Bethesda would would let slip on mm -hmm. like day one of a release, especially I the flying. I was like, I was surprised oh, yeah. the flying was okay. Eh. I thought it was gonna be shitty, really shitty it's... in hindsight. But it was, eh. yeah, it wasn't like super cringy in my opinion. I also it's basic. Yeah, <laughs> I'll say I, that. I was. Basic. I was also surprised by one one of the things that I like the most about Bethesda's games, like Oblivion, Morrowind. Skyrim, Fallout 3, is each one has this sense of like wonder to it, the sense of awe. You you see these worlds and I am compelled to explore them. I get excited at the idea of exploring this. And I contrast that with this. And yeah, when I, I look at Starfield, yeah. I, I don't feel excited to explore this. Mm -hmm. I was gonna say this, yeah, exact same opinion. It's like I'll add to it is that the reason being right is that when we explore this shit, I either will get bored or because like, oh, I'm only exploring so and so area because I need to get this piece of glue for my fucking gun so it could be stronger. That's my that was my my shtick with Fallout 4. Yeah, that's why I got so pissed about exploring yeah, everywhere. That's exactly what I said. Yeah, it's, I want I want to explore not to be bored, not for upgrades, but because I'm it's genuinely fun. excited yeah. Yeah, for the fun factor. And there's no fun factor. Yeah. And uh, the thing, too, with, with Starfield as well is that I, I... <laughs> this is just one of those those cases where Beth I think Bethesda mistakes it's it's this trap of, of quantity quant over quality exactly yeah. yeah where there's way too many different gameplay elements and this game just doesn't have a distinct identity of its own and it, i just see all these different elements from all these different games but the difference between something like this and something like uh ghost tsushima ghost tsushima is very much like it takes a lot of influence from a different game but it adds its own unique flavor to it with the samurai epic this is like it basically looks like their version of like Elite Dangerous, No Man's Sky, Mass Effect, a little bit of Halo in there. And especially it just like when I saw it just looks so bland. Yeah. Especially with some of the interviews, it's like they, they were like, Oh, we're gonna take this planet and make it like this, and then like we're gonna make it like this and that and I'm like, Man, you guys just wanna take like fucking every f single fucking sci-fi thing we've already experienced but then just yeah. put it in the game like if i can name it out you can help me out with this star wars alien like you know alien more the the first alien mm -hmm. like because you saw the one where the alien comes out that that tight quarter that was the yeah. only i swear that was the only thing i was excited for in that game because i'm like oh cool a horror mission that's aesthetic type thing that's kind of cool but then i realized that's probably gonna be boring as shit it's just once, the, the, that, once that thing gets through, you know what I mean? Yeah, oh. and and I I've seen this this adjective being thrown around a lot at Starfield. That a lot of people are saying, "Oh, I admire its ambition." I 
don't, and this may be a, a, a controversial thing to say, I don't see a lot of ambition in Starfield. Again, yeah, to me, there's Quantity no is not ambition. Yeah, there's no ambition. Like I just said, they're literally taking everything we know about sci-fi and literally just copy and pasting it like a fucking Google yeah. file. That, it's a Frankenstein's that monster. That is Starfield. That yeah. is what Starfield is, Is I feel, is going to be. Like you, and I hate, I hate to keep bringing up PlayStation games for comparison. Yeah, I know yeah, it pisses people fine. off. But you know what I think an ambitious game is? I think Death Stranding is an ambitious game. Because I mean, yeah. it's... it's it, that's the thing like it's very divisive it's it, it's either one of those like you either click it either clicks with you or it doesn't but i defy you to name me one other game that is like death stranding is there any other game oh. out there that is like it that has these systems that has the the focus on the environmental navigation where every single surface you're walking on it's like a micro challenge and you deliver packages and you build roads, and you encounter this like strange new lore that it has. You may not like the game, you may hate it actually, but you have to admit that that it is unlike anything we've ever seen before, whether you hate it or like it. It I've never seen something like like Death Stranding, and you may call it a failure, but it is ambitious. Ambition does not automatically mean it will be successful. It is ambitious. I personally think Death Stranding is a success. I really like Death Stranding. I think it's beautiful. I think it's unique. I think it's a masterclass and string players along for micro rewards. I think it's I think it's wonderful in some cases, but when I look at Starfield, I just see other games. And it doesn't have that unique flavor to offset that staleness that I feel from looking at it. Cuz it it just looks like space exploration the video game and 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 i don't i don't are there any like characters that i've seen that that are unique or have something cool to say no did, did it introduce any rpg elements that i have i haven't seen before no and, they, and i was did, gonna did, laugh my did, ass off because in hindsight let's be clear yeah they totally looked at obsidian stuff and be like yeah let's just copy and paste it yeah. again that it's nothing original we've seen this before that that collection like, where where they collect the 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 element in the beginning before the combat starts that looked like directly out of no man's sky the same yeah. it looked like almost the same uh, exact animation me, too i i hate to i hate to call this game because no one should ever play this game but uh, especially when you're walking, you see those cluster of rocks, whatever, and they're all floating, all that. Mm -hmm. That kind of gave me a Mass Effect Andromeda vibe. Yeah, a lot of Mass Effect in uh, those. Oh my god. Again, it just feels like, like you said, it's like a Frankenstein. There's nothing original about yeah. this. And not to, the one major thing, might just be me, the one major thing that still pissed me off about this game, you only can play human. I want a oh, really? game where I... Yeah, right? Like, because you've seen the character... Yeah, you've seen the character customization, yeah. right? Because I'm like, I'm pretty sure you can't... Right? Because uh, they would have introduced aliens by now. Uh -huh. I haven't seen a single fucking, like, sentient, playable alien. You or can... at least a alien to, you know, talk to. I wonder... I have... This is where my my problem as well with, like, the... The, the kind of, like, spreading itself really thin as far as different gameplay is that I would... I would be much more excited for this game if they had told me, hey, Starfield is a game that has no combat, it has no uh, shipbuilding, it has no base building, it has no thousands of planets, it is a non-violent game where you go out and explore a singular solar system and talk to people and you have to negotiate the the politics of the various factions and like prevent wars from happening or or solve a, a political dispute between two people or or a a, a a president and their people like yeah that that to me sounds that to me sounds ambitious this idea of a non-combative don't do combat you suck at it Bethesda just do this kind of non-combative dialogue driven rpg where you can be like as smart as you want to be you could be as dumb as you want to be you could the story can play out in a number of different ways but that's not what they're doing they're just doing this here is skyrim but in space and it's just bigger 
And not to mention like, probably okay. and I, I could just I could be wrong, which I, I hope I'm not, but it's just the whole like it, it'll probably be like Fall of Freeze writing, dialogue and all that where oh, you can play good guy and bad guy and, and, and you know, I'm in the corner and I'd be like, Well, what if we there's gray moralities? I was like, nah, mm -hmm. fuck that. Bethesda again, Bethesda is too fucking mm -hmm. safe. Like, yeah, you can yeah. say, again, you can say whatever you want about, like, oh, but they're doing these things now with the RPG mechanics. Like, again, you mm -hmm. can be playing Fallout New Vegas or play any other Witcher Free. Yeah. Witcher Free where everything is in gray and not yeah. in black and fucking white. A lot of morality, you know? a, lot of, a lot of ethical dilemmas. Yeah, yeah. I'll say that, too. Yeah, I'll say that, too, real quick. Um is that a lot of people now, like, it might change later in the future, a lot of people are now looking for more gray, more, more morality games now. Mm -hmm. They don't want to do the typical good, bad decisions. Yeah. I was like, a decision, like, yeah, especially in these RPGs, nine times out of ten, a decision is either going to um, give something positive to one faction or another, or if you want to be an... And it's fine to be... A uh, super good guy or bad guy, but you have to work hard for that. That's my opinion. How good RPG works with choices and consequences. The one positive I will say that I've heard so far is that your character is not voiced. Yeah, not voiced. So and thank it's God. Going to keep, it's going to keep like the head tracking yeah. type thing, so you just be staring. Which That's I'm better. fine with. I'm fine I, with that. I never, I never minded that. Yeah, I never mind looking at the guy, uh, guy, girl. Whatever, and yep. then going through the that, thing. And that that classic too, Bethesda UI you know, with the dialogue. Yeah, that, I would yeah, that was fine. much rather apparently have that. Too, apparently, too, with like the way the charisma system is going to work, it's going to be, an, yeah, take it with a grain of salt, it's like a newly enhanced version of how Oblivion's char charisma system worked. I never used it. I okay. hated that system. Oh, with that wheel? <laughs> yeah, that stupid wheel. Oh, God. Yeah. Like, given the emotions, like <laughs> Todd yeah, Howard yeah. getting mad. Angry, sad, happy, <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah, it's oh, it's. I I just want. I this is not what I want from Bethesda. This, this is I, not what I want an RPG. Period. No, it's not what I want in an RPG. Because I, <laughs> yeah. I just I I said this like as soon as they announced that Thousand Planets thing. I just my first thought was they're gonna have to spend time on that, polishing that, making sure it runs well, designing it. So all of that wasted time that could have been spent on improving the story, improving the dialogue system, making it more fleshed out, is now going to go to this system that I don't think will help the game but hinder it. And it's the same thing with the crafting. It's the same thing with the base building. You know what? Actually, out of those things, base building, I, I may not enjoy it. I may not personally do it. Base building and ship building make the most sense out of those new things. Mm -hmm. But yeah. but this like thousands of planets or hundreds of planets thing, like no, don't do that. Um, this this crafting system, don't do that shit. This this focus on gunplay and action, don't do that. Don't do that shit. Just have us be actual explorers. And explore space without running into uh, fucking pirates and enemies all the time. That was that was like uh, oh, yeah. Oh man, that was, it's like a. Uh, that's where you go. <laughs> that was man. one of my problems with Fallout Four, where Fallout Four didn't give you enough opportunities to solve a dispute non-violently a lot of dispute like almost every single dispute i can think of in that game had some kind of conflict like like physical conflict that you needed to, to get through and the you know, gunplay sucks look at, look at fall new yeah look at fall new vegas again you could literally uh, at least nine times out of ten passively talk to you could literally talk to all the guys that were involved in in a, you like uh you know quote unquote your death like via Benny, yes. and you didn't have to kill any of them. Yeah, any of them. It's crazy. If like you, you, you could be yeah. a super nice guy, and it's like it's again. This is the kind of stuff, or like um, uh, I think uh, see, uh, not what Kai's are, but uh, the other guy, Lucius or Lucius, whatever. If you convince him, if you got like a hundred plus charisma, you could convince him not to uh, stand down and stuff. Yes. And he's one of the toughest bosses and fallout but again that's how uh that is great you know rpg mechanics dialogue whatever yep. the fuck you want to call it yeah that was that like, was nah, the, we got to take the safe route you know yeah that was that was the example i was going to bring up where it the if you have if you take the time to pump a ton of points into like like this the skillful negotiation perks and and charisma and and speech 
you can literally go up to the what is his name um uh the guy with the 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 helmet at the end of the the seizures legion yeah, uh, uh, yeah you keep lanius talking, like La- La- lanius uh the the war leader mm-hmm. yeah. you can literally go to him and if you have a high enough speech talk him into talk him into standing down and leaving you can do and, and that that's like oh my god you can't do that in fallout 4 not to my knowledge you can't yeah, you can't, as far as I know, you can't convince, um, your father, uh, was it not, no, 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 you can't convince your son, I don't give a shit about spoilers, fuck Fall 4, but your the son, story Sean, sucks. yeah, the story yeah, sucks, the, the Institute, the Institute to stand down and be like, we can work together, we don't, you mm-hmm. don't need to, like, shelve over this technology, whatever, yeah, and again, uh, and, uh, also with that other piece of shit from the Brotherhood, is to go, you don't have to be racist with the Sims, you know, we can all work together, mm-hmm. and all this other stuff, and, I, again, I'll say this too, surprisingly, the, the writing in Fallout 4 is so much fucking lazier compared to Free, and, and Free is just kind of mediocre in the writing, there's some dumbass things the character your characters do yeah but it's 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 better i'd say the story is is more interesting compared to fallout 4 though fall fallout 4's plot twist i saw that coming a mile away where it's like oh the leader is your son I'm like yeah no shit i, yeah, I kind of figured no, that no out no fucking shit yeah i figured that out it's better i i like it better new vegas did the opposite where benny is twisted by your character mm-hmm. actually being alive what in the goddamn yeah, I, I love he, it when you find him and he's just, like, shocked that you're alive. Yeah. So and It's just so funny that yeah. he does it so casually about, like, <laughs> oh, I guess I guess we'll be yeah. friends now. Mm-hmm. Just please don't kill me. So, uh, but did, yeah. you, did you have anything... Before we get to the final stuff about the, the, the showcase, Did I, I'll, I'll let you go whatever you have to say about Starfield. I have one final thing I want to say about it, but I want to... I want to do it after you've had your piece with, with Starfield. Uh, like I said, um, it, it's so disappointing to me, actually. I'll just say my last piece. It's so disappointing to me that the only, as far as I know, the only game you can play aliens and also human at the same time in, in a sci-fi RPG is Star Wars Jedi Academy. Is that true? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's so, mm. it pisses me off so much. There, there's so much potential, like literally... It, like oh, Elder Scroll. Like, but Befe- but I said that too, Bethesda. If you can make eight nine races in Elder Scrolls, yeah, you can make fucking aliens. And it's, people it's respond bullshit. to you differently based on your race too. In 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 Skyrim and Oblivion, like people can be like prejudiced against you because of your race. Yeah, especially yes, yeah, especially, and especially you- Skyrim. There's this one asshole. That's like, I think he's racist against Dark Elves, but if you're a Nord, he gives you the most respect to be like, yeah, mm-hmm. it's a welcome to Skyrim, mm-hmm. the true pl- Yeah, <laughs> it's a true one. These damn Dark Elves <laughs> gotta get out of here, those man. Damn, those damn Dark Elves. Yeah. <laughs> Skyrim belongs to the Nords. Yeah, exactly. Uh, come on, Bethesda. So, the the last thing yeah, I will say, say the last the... thing I will say about Starfield is it's that this actually doesn't come from me. This comes from a quote that I love so much when I was listening to a podcast recently, actually like yesterday, that I had to transcribe it because I loved it so much. And yeah, this, sure, sure. This quote comes from uh, Rick Hogue of Hogue Law. Oh, and, okay. And okay. on the on the Bitcast that podcast that he does with like Travis Ty guy and a couple other people, this is how. He described Starfield when he was going on his like mic drop rant about it. So I'm going to read the the I paraphrase some of this just because some of the, the things that he adds in doesn't really translate well to, to transcribing like mm-hmm. on paper. So this was his quote about Starfield, and I almost completely agree with him. Starfield had the possibility of being the journey to see new worlds and things that haven't been seen before. Instead, what I saw was the most boring, imaginatively barren, functional but not exciting way to think about exploring space. You start by showing me the dumpiest ass ship bringing in the non-AI compliant pirates where you bullet sponge the hell out of them. The bones of this game are things I'm not interested in. This isn't something that looks interesting to me. When you start talking about precursor artifacts and the visions that they give you, 
all I can think of now is the ass Halo TV series, Mass Effect, and everything in between. Every single choice that they made in putting together this game seems to lack an iota of actual imagination. Why do we want to go to the stars, says Todd Howard to me in a freaking briefing room six months ago, and it's because we want to see what's out there. And what Bethesda has told me is out there is boredom, and that's why I'm upset about Starfield. It's not the dead-eyed NPCs, it's not the fact that I played Fallout 4 and found it wanting, and apparently I'm getting that now with a spaceship. It's the fact that you have looked at the questions of life, humanity, and existence, and have answered them with, We don't know, please buy our game because we've got a thousand rocks for you to walk on now. That's why it was disappointing to me. And when I heard that, I was like, God damn! (laughs) He totally roasted him and did not give a fuck. Damn! Just body slammed starfield just it's coming in from the ropes it's, oh my god it's got todd howard so i, I loved that yeah. quote i just wanted to read it um yeah oh, so god. how can but how can xbox improve for next year with this showcase that's the thing i want to end this with okay. how can they improve let's end positively how can they improve Oh, okay. You're asking me. Okay, yes. I'll say, I'll say again. Like, do the Sony thing. Less talky, more gamey. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. They need to. And for the love of God, if you do not, like I said before, if you don't talk about like, oh, we're gonna show you this, but later, no, you show us now or wait a year, whatever time you mm-hmm. need yeah. to uh, deal with this. Because again, this is the kind of stuff that gets people pissed off. Yeah. You know, it's ridiculous. I would say be more open about what your showcase will have. Don't let people's imaginations run wild. Just about a month before the showcase, just say, hey, we just want to provide an update on what's actually going to be here. It will be about 60 to 90 minutes of games that will be coming out within the next 12 months. Please look forward to it. We will not be showing Avowed or um, what the fuck are game? I've completely blanked on some Avowed, Fable, Perfect Dark, Hellblade yeah, 2, uh, a, a, a lot of stuff. We're not going to show that because it's just not ready. If you're open and honest with people, you'd be surprised of the response that you'd get. But when you allow people's yeah. imaginations to run wild and then you give this... Mm, people are going to be a lot less sympathetic about yeah. your your plight. I mean, CDPR like like I I still consider they suck like today until like I don't know if Witcher Four is actually really good. Yeah. But I'll say this: at least they were honest about keeping the delays from Cyberpunk. And then unfortunately, yeah, when we did get it, the developers still had sucked. to be honest and say, <laughs> yeah, developers had to be honest and say, yeah. This game was not ready still, and yet the publishers, the publisher side of our company was saying, no, this has to go out. It's like, fuck. Yeah. And then another thing, too, is that I would not make these 90 minutes. I would make these 45 to 60. I would I would take out a lot of this. I would I would have taken out Overwatch. I would have taken out Diablo. I would have taken out um, as... Maybe not taken out as dust falls, but but just dramatically scaled down how much of it is shown. And I would have made that part of the extended showcase that comes later. But that's another thing, too, is that there are a lot of games that were shown. And it's it's for the average person. It might be hard to keep track of just and then. But in it, it robs when you have so many games in like a like a 90 minute span, you kind of start to like you could probably potentially overlook some like really good shit because there's just so many with the Sony stuff. And again, going back to Sony 30 minutes, 40 minutes, you know, it allows them to select a few things to be, and they're not always good at this. There's granted Sony is not always good at this, but if you look at that state of play with the 14 games that they showed, you know, 14 games in 30 minutes, that's a good time to quantity ratio, I'd say at least. You get two minutes per game on average, and you're good. It's not it doesn't overstay its welcome. One game doesn't shove the other out of the way in terms of time. It's good. It's consistently mm-hmm. paced. 
But yeah. with the Xbox just do, ones, just do what Sony yeah. did. I, if yeah. Bethesda can rip off all these games, you can rip off Sony's way of doing the <laughs> conference. Hell, like we a couple of years back, we were telling you, yes, keep doing it like this. This is how you do it, and then you yeah. just completely forgot to do what you were doing. Yeah. You know, yeah. Xbox had good pacing like a couple of years ago, and then it kind of mm, was like yeah. now it's like. Eh, mm. So I would just I would just be a little bit more selective with what you're gonna show in your your showcase. Yeah, that's a, that's another thing because like I feel again just like with Sony, generally about I think eighty to ninety percent of everybody was pleased with all the games shown. Even the mm-hmm. games that like, like like what Razor said, even the games that we didn't like or it's like eh, it's like was like oh mm-hmm. this is this makes sense for this conference you know mm-hmm. showcase whatever yeah there was no reason even though they're gonna buy activision there was no reason for overwatch 2 or diablo 4 to be here and to be as showcased as long as they were mm-hmm. so, that's really all i that's that's my piece on the xbox games yep, showcase same. yeah all right. Well, thank you for taking the time to talk with me, man. I always it's always no fun talking to you. And yeah, uh, thank you everyone for watching. If you like, which see subscribe. Go to Clay's Twitch and subscribe to him. Good dude. And yep. as always, I will catch y'all next time. See ya. Yep. See ya.